Are you looking for remote jobs or remote work that doesn't require you to have a work experience or even a college degree? Wow. Then this video is definitely for you. Today, I'm going to talk about the top five remote jobs that you can apply for even if you don't have any prior experience, even if you are not a college graduate. The only thing that you need to do to be able to apply for this type of remote work or look for clients and book your clients is to number one, learn from different YouTube creators or content creators, and you can find most of their videos on YouTube. And number two is you can either enroll in a free or a paid online course. For each of the remote work that I'm going to talk about today, I will tell you what are the skills that you need for that work, what are the tools that you need to learn, and three, where you can look for free and paid courses that you can enroll to, and who are the content creators that you should follow to learn more about that specific remote work. The first and most common remote work that you can definitely learn and try to look for clients or apply for work for is being a general virtual assistant or an executive virtual assistant. The skills that you need to learn to be able to succeed in this role is number one, learn how to do different admin tasks. These admin tasks are as follows. You have inbox management or email management wherein you have access to your client's email and you are going to clean, clean your client's email or reach inbox zero, as well as learning how to create drafts for your client and sometimes you have to reply on your client's behalf. The next skill that you need to learn is calendar management because as a general VA or as an EVA, you create meetings for your client, you make sure that their calendars is up to date at all times, so you have to make sure that you learn the features of Google Calendar and other calendar applications that your client will be using. Next skill is travel management. Most of our clients are from the US, some of them might be from Australia, Europe, or other parts of the world, and most of them do travel sometimes for business or work or even for their own personal vacations. So you have to make sure that you learn how to book flights, search for restaurants, search for hotels, and book these hotels. And the most important part in travel management is creating the, the final travel itinerary based from the reservations that you've made. Next skill for a general VA or an EVA is household management. This simply means that you should learn how to pay for your clients' bills, learn how to pay using a credit card if you're not familiar yet. You should learn where to search for service providers such as electricians, gardeners, and the like. Next skill is event management. So basically, this is the rarest skill or the rarest task that we are going to do as general VA or EVAs. This is basically you planning an event for your client, whether it be a personal event or a corporate event. Next skill, which is very important, is research management. As a general VA or an EVA, we do a lot of research on behalf of our client, whether it be research on how to apply for a visa, research on how to apply for a health card and the like. So you have to make sure that you know where to look and how to use the internet into your advantage when searching for the correct information. Now that you know the skills of a general and an executive virtual assistant, let's head on to the tools. The tools that you need to learn is Google Workspace. Within Google Workspace, you have Gmail, Google Calendar, and Google Drive. Within Google Drive, you have Google Sheets, Docs, Slides, and Forms. So you have to make sure that you know how to use all of those tools or to use the Google Workspace environment and find out the features of each and every tool within your Google Workspace environment. Next tool that you need to learn are project management tools. If you've never used a project management tool before, then you can start with Notion. It is very user and beginner friendly. Navigating Notion is very, very easy to understand. If you want to learn more about the different and advanced 
project management tools, you can start off with Asana and Trello. If you want to learn more advanced project management tools, then you can go to clickupmonday.com and Airtable. If you're interested to become a general virtual assistant or an executive virtual assistant, then look no further because we do have a lot of free content here on my YouTube channel. We also have a free learning center via NAS Academy. It's the executive virtual assistant community. Everything will be in the link in the caption down below. We also have a paid online course on how to become an executive virtual assistant. If you like a classroom setup type of learning environment wherein it's live via Zoom or face-to-face -face via Zoom, you can enroll via CodeGo because I do have a partnership with CodeGo and I am their instructor in teaching you on how to become a general virtual assistant. All of the links to be able to enroll in all of those courses and join our free community will be in our caption down below. Moving on to the next remote work that you can definitely specialize on, look for clients or applying in a company for even without prior experience or even if you are an undergrad is to become a social media manager. Being a social media manager is definitely not an easy feat. There are a lot of things that you have to learn to be able to succeed in this role. What does a social media manager do? If you are a beginner in this industry, then you can start in creating content, whether it be photos, static content, or videos. And you should also learn how to read and understand social media analytics. Here are the list of the social media platforms that you need to familiarize yourself with. First up, of course, is TikTok. Next, you have your Instagram. Next is Facebook page. Next is LinkedIn or LinkedIn page. Next is YouTube. And finally, you have X or what we used to call before Twitter. And of course, we also have the new platform, which is threads. What are the skills that you need to have to succeed in this role as a social media manager? First up is, of course, creating content, static or video content. It's very easy to create content now by using Canva and CapCut. So make sure that you familiarize yourself with creating content. Next skill is you should learn the basics of copywriting. When we say copywriting, it's just not simply writing for writing's sake, but it's about writing to be able to sell a product or a service. Next is you need to understand SEO or search engine optimization because the captions that you need to write or the copyrights that you need to create should be search engine optimized. Next skill of a social media manager is reading and understanding social media analytics. Personally, I believe is the hardest part of being a social media manager. You need to be able to understand the analytics of your client's social media page so that you can plan the best type of content that will help your client to reach their social media goals. Next skill that you need to learn is the basics of marketing strategy because you're just not creating content just because you feel like posting this video or you feel like this picture looks nice. It's not about that. You have to be able to create content to make sure that your client's analytics is improving month in, month out. So you have to understand a little bit about marketing strategy to be able to make sure that your client's social media presence is growing. Next skill that you need to have as a social media manager is research management. Why? Because for you to be able to strategize properly on what type of posts you need to create, what type of videos, when you need to post specific videos, how often do you need to post for your client in the social media platform, Forms that they have, or you need to be able to research all of this important information. What's important also to research is how the algorithms of each platform works. So having that research management skill is key for you to achieve in the social media manager role. Now that you know the skills, let's move on to the tools that you need to learn if you want to become a social media manager. First up, of course, are your editing tools, which is Canva and CapCut. There are a lot of 
advanced tools out there. But since this video is all about beginners or you being interested in remote work, then you can start off with Canva and CapCut. Next tool that you need to learn, of course, are all of the social media platforms out there. What do you need to learn in that social media platform is, of course, the algorithm of each platform. They all have different algorithms. So you have to make sure that you familiarize yourself with that. And next up, of course, is learning the analytics and how to read the analytics of each platform. Next thing that you need to learn how to use is chat GPT or AI tools, because these will help you if you're in a rut or you're in a writer's block or a creative block. So you have to um, take advantage of these AI tools such as chat GPT to help you with brainstorming content and creating captions. Next thing that you need to learn how to use are project management tools such as Google Sheets, Airtable, and Notion. Now, these three platforms will help you create a content calendar for your client. Now that you know the skills and the tools, you can follow these content creators if you want to succeed as a social media manager. First up is Kohi Socials. You can join their group under Kohi Clubhouse. And then I have my very good friends, Edina, under Edina Sparks and Rowena under Rowena Creates if you would like to learn more about how to become a social media manager. And if you want to have a roadmap that would guide you in becoming a social media manager or a freelancer and a remote work, you can also find all of us and all of our content under Barangay VA free community. All you have to do is join us in our free community. The links of everyone that I mentioned will be in the caption down below. The next remote work that you can definitely apply for or learn how to do even if you don't have prior experience or even if you are an undergrad is to become a coder or a programmer. Now, I don't know anything much about this, but definitely I know that even if you don't have experience in being a programmer, even if you don't have experience as an IT, even if you didn't study computer in your school, you can definitely be a programmer because you can definitely learn them or learn how to do programming and coding, even if you don't have any of those experience before. You don't also need a college graduate or a degree to be able to learn how to do coding or programming. Now, like I mentioned, I don't have much idea on what a programmer is or a coder is, but my client for the past two years, this is my client's expertise. My client is a programmer and a coder. So I know a little bit of something about being a programmer or a coder. So basically what a programmer does or a coder does is you create the back end of each of the applications or any websites that you see online. A coder or a programmer creates the formulas and the rules to be able to make a specific site or a specific application to work. If you are someone who likes to write codes or interested in creating a website or creating applications um, and you are interested or you want to learn how a specific rule works like for example when you are looking at a specific website and you want to understand how were how was i able to log in in this account and use these tools or use these apps just like canva for example how are you able to search this specific word and canva provides you with the different templates now, a coder or a programmer does that on the back end so that whenever you type a search, these are the results that comes up. And whenever you click a button, this is what's going to happen. So th those are the things that coders or programmers do. So if that's something that interests you, then you can definitely learn how to be a programmer and a coder, even if you don't have prior work experience about it. And even if you're an undergraduate or you never studied programming or coding before. Programmers and coders are very in demand right now and they are being paid a lot. So if this is something that interests you and 
you want to learn more about it, then you're watching the right video. Because here in the Philippines, we do have a company that provides you with training on how to become a programmer or a coder. And that company is Zuit or Zuit.com. Even if you are an undergrad or no prior work experience in being a coder or a programmer, you can enroll in their courses so that you can learn how to do programming and coding. And then after that, you can start looking for your clients as a coder or a programmer, or you can apply in companies who are hiring remotely for coders and programmers. So with Zuit.com, you can enroll in their developer bootcamp. And this program has three sub courses. And those courses are front end course, back end course, and full stack course. These are the courses that you need to take if you want to become a developer, a programmer, or a coder. These courses that I mentioned covers key concepts on full stack web development, including responsive web design, rapid prototyping, and product deployment. So if you're someone who's looking or you have interest and that strong willingness to learn programming, all you have to do is click the link in the caption down below that says zuit.com and you can definitely join as long as you pass their screening process. How does the application or enrollment goes? You register and you book to the course. You take their suitability test. You attend the live consultation one-on-one -on -one session. And then you begin your bootcamp. Now, there are two types of bootcamp or classes. The first one is your full-time bootcamp or full-time class. That full-time class is for two months. And it's also from Mondays to Fridays from 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. They do have different payment plans if you are interested to enroll. They do have a study now and pay later payment plan. All you have to do is pay a down payment to start your coding class. After you're done with your Zuit training, that's the only time that you're going to resume your monthly payments. There is also an option to have installment payment plans wherein they will divide it into eight separate installments. So if you're interested in applying in programming or coding, all you have to do is click the details in the caption down below and follow all of their social media platforms. Again, you can enroll in your coding or programming class at zuit.com. If you'd like to learn more about zuit.com and the class and the programming bootcamp that they have or the developer bootcamp that they have, all you have to do is comment zuit in our comment section and we'll create a new video for you in the coming weeks. The next remote work that might interest you is if you're someone who loves to go shopping, then this type of remote work might be something that you would like to apply to or look for clients for, and that's becoming an e-commerce virtual assistant. When you're an e-commerce VA or virtual assistant, you are helping a online seller in their online shops, doing your order, order taking, or fulfilling an order, anything that your client would like you to do virtually or remotely, you can definitely do as an e-commerce VA. The very famous e-commerce VAs are who we call or we're familiar with as Amazon virtual assistants. There are a lot of them out there that you, I'm sure you are following as well. And they are what we call e-commerce virtual assistants. What are the skills that you need to learn if you would like to become an e-commerce VA? Is of course, how to do a read inventory. Reading inventory specifically in e-commerce platforms such as Amazon, Etsy, and Shopify. You should also learn the basics of copywriting so that if your client asks you to create a copyright on Shopify or Pinterest, you can definitely create one. Another skill that you need to familiarize yourself with is search engine optimization. And finally, another skill that you need to learn is product and research management because your client will definitely ask you to help them look for new products that they can sell on their platform and the like. Next up are the tools that you need to learn if you want to succeed as an e-commerce virtual assistant. First up is familiarize yourself with the platforms such as Amazon, Shopify, and Etsy. 
You should also familiarize yourself with other platforms such as TikTok Shop, Pinterest, and Instagram. Using Canva is something that's also very important because your client might ask you to edit some of the photos that you need to post on their online stores. ChatGPT or AI tools is again something that you need to take advantage of because it will help you in terms of search engine optimization or creating captions and copyright for your client. If you'd like to learn more about how to become a e-commerce virtual assistant, then these are the content creators that you should follow. First up is Nikki B Vlogs. She's very, very famous in terms of Amazon virtual assistant. So you should definitely follow her. If you're interested in making it big as an Amazon virtual assistant, then you should follow Amazon Nation PH as well because they teach you a lot of different things and courses on how to succeed as an Amazon virtual assistant. And of course, if you would like to enroll in e-commerce course, who better to help you than my very, very dear friend, Bloggy Mary. She has a very, very affordable e-commerce online course that you should enroll to. And that will be in the caption down below as well. And last but definitely not the least, the next remote work that you can apply for, even if you don't have prior experience or even if you are an undergraduate, is becoming a real estate virtual assistant. There are a lot of real estate agents in the U.S. because of their real estate market. It's very different from how real estate agents are here in the Philippines. In the U.S., you can rarely sell a house without going through a real estate agent. And they do have a lot of different rules that governs the real estate industry. That's why real estate is very big in the U.S. And a lot of these real estate agents are looking for remote workers or real estate virtual assistants. I personally don't know much about real estate VA because I don't have any experience in that work. My client is not a real estate virtual assistant, so I don't know what we're doing as real estate VAs, but the skills I believe that you need to learn since I do have friends who are real estate virtual assistant is number one, you need to have great attention to detail because when you are a real estate virtual assistant, you are handling a lot of different documents for your client. So you need to make sure that you have great attention to details. Next up, of course, is you should have great organizational skills because like I mentioned, you will be dealing with a lot of different documents, a lot of different laws, especially if your client is working across different states in the U.S. So you have to make sure that you are organized in terms of your documentation. So that's something that will definitely help you if you want to succeed in becoming a real estate virtual assistant. Another skill that you need to have if you would like to succeed as a real estate virtual assistant is lead generation. That's because sometimes as a real estate VA, you will be reaching out to different individuals and asking them if they are currently in the market or are selling their homes. So you need to be able to learn how to do lead management in the real estate industry. Now, in terms of the tools that you need to learn, I don't know the specific tools that they're using because my friend who is a real estate virtual assistant is using a specific tool that I think is specifically designed for real estate virtual assistants or for real estate agents. And I think depending on who you're working with or who your client is, that client will be using a specific tool with their company. But what you need to learn how to use is, of course, your Google Workspace. And what's very important there, of course, is Google Drive. Because within Google Drive, you have your Google Sheets and Docs. And of course, Google Drive is a place where you can save all of your documents. So you have to make sure that you familiarize yourself with the features and how to optimize the usage of Google Workspace and Google Drive. If you want to learn more about how to become a real estate virtual assistant, because this industry is really big in the U.S. and they are always hiring for real estate virtual assistants, assistance, all you have to do is follow these content creators to learn more about that. First up is AJ or Tycoon VA. The link to his TikTok channel will be in the 
caption down below. You're going to learn a lot from Tycoon VA about how to become a successful real estate virtual assistant. If you're interested in enrolling in a course, all you have to do, of course, again, Bloggy Mary. She has a very amazing real estate virtual assistant course. It's very affordable. All you have to do is click the link down below and start enrolling in her course. So just a quick recap. Here are the five remote jobs that you can definitely learn. And then you can start looking for clients or apply in a company for even if you don't have prior work experience or if you are an undergraduate. First one is being a general virtual assistant or an executive virtual assistant. Next up is being a social media manager. Next is being a programmer or a coder. Next is being an e-commerce virtual assistant. And finally, being a real estate virtual assistant. All of the information that I gave you in this video will be in the links in the caption down below. If you'd like to learn more about the details of each specific remote job that I mentioned, all you have to do is comment below that specific remote job and then we are going to discuss them or talk about them in the upcoming videos in my channel. And if you want to learn more about how to become a virtual assistant or the life of a freelancer or a remote worker, all you have to do is subscribe here in my channel. And of course, follow me and all of my other social media handles. Everything will be in the link down below. Again, I do have a free learning center that you can definitely join to learn about how to become a freelancer, to become a general virtual assistant and an executive virtual assistant. And if you're interested in an online course on how to be a general virtual assistant or an EVA, all you have to do is click the link down below because we do have a paid online course. If you want to enroll in a classroom setup and a live online seminar wherein I will be the instructor and you will be my students, all you have to do is enroll via code go. The link will be in the description down below and I will teach you how to become a general virtual assistant. It's going to be an eight day bootcamp from Mondays to Saturdays from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. You're going to learn a lot about being a general virtual Woo! assistant. All you have to do is register. All the important links again will be in the caption down below. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. This is Mia, and you have a great day.